Hey Caves! And the X misses the spot. It's Monday the 20th of November and this is Screenplay. Hey, patch notes. I'm Nick. And I'm Steph and you better believe it's headline time. First up, and EA have turned off all microtransactions in Battlefront 2. For now. After what was possibly the biggest public outcry towards a publisher for a game's payment model, the move to remove all microtransactions came late last week. The publisher have confirmed, however, that the removal is temporary. They will return in a different, albeit still progression-based form. It's just the story that keeps on giving. <laughs> I mean, we were all wondering what Disney would be thinking about all this, you know, on the uh, lead up to releasing a big Star Wars film and yeah. suddenly the, you know, Star Wars game to end all Star Wars games. And that's very well could be what it is. It could be the <laughs> Star Wars game to end all Star Wars games. Uh, is, you know, sort of covered in controversy for gambling and microtransactions. Well, word was that Disney called EA and were like... Uh, Lead I, down the law. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I read some stuff where they said it was Bob Iger initially, who's the CEO of Disney, but I, I think it was actually uh, the, the chairman of consumer products and interactive media, Jimmy Pitaro, and was basically like, mate, you are fucking with something way beyond your pay grade. What's our game plan here for how we're handling this shitstorm? Yeah, so I mean, their they, their game plan has been to clinch, <laughs> yeah, and just <gasps> uh, and get rid of everything. I mean, it's, it, I, I guess it's the right move, right? Like you you just you shut it down as much as you can shut a for live sure, game down, for and sure. then and then and then figure this out. What I don't like is that they've basically gone, they'll come back. Once we figured this out, like you, you all have a brief respite. Well, but that's, that's interesting though, because they can't come back in the same form that they are now. So, what changes could they possibly make to this, to the current system, mm. that um, will, you know, have people being like, oh, okay, well, this is all right. Like, I'm happy with the game in this state. Do you reckon like they're just hoping that, like, if they wait long enough? and the movie comes out and then they just like silently turn them back on again and no one will notice. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that could be the thing. The thing is, I, I think uh, for a lot of people, they don't care. A lot of people don't care because the last game sold like 14 million copies. There were not 14 million people on the internet going, um, excuse me, I feel like this was a shallow experience and I'm looking for a single player campaign. There was like 200,000 people saying that and then the rest of, and the rest of the people were just like, all right, this is the Star Wars game that I'm playing. Mm. So it's probably the same situation here, but it's just about how much goodwill can you burn with a hardcore fan base before they don't come back. The only thing it has proven is that we will do whatever you want us to do, even though we will complain about it the entire time because we're weak and we suck and that's how we got to this situation in the first place. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on and who wants to see some desert pics? It's like dick pics? I don't know, I just- Okay, yeah. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has revealed some new screenshots and a picture of the new desert map they'll be bringing to the game. There's still no official word on when we'll get to play on this, however it's said to be launching when the game leaves early access and launches as version 1.0. Cool! It looks like the other map. It's very similar. It looks a it? lot like the other map. Just Let's bit, just, just <laughs> get some f***ing colour in this game, guys! Just, Fortnite is eating your lunch! It's the same as the other map, just dustier. It's just, just, it's just like the other map, but in summer. What we need, what we need yep. is something like a, like a snow map. Underwater map. Space map. Maybe, maybe Candy not. land map. A, a snow map, but with some cool like PVE elements, like snow leopards and polar bears that you have to fight off, as well as other players. That is exactly what. I should be this game designer. You should. No. <laughs> Um, can we just take a moment though to have a look at some of the like the names the, the names <laughs> yeah. on this map? And I don't know if this is like legit or if these are just placeholders. Yeah. Because they feel a bit kitschy. Yep. Rattle some off for the for the people. Uh, well, we have punishment as a location on this map. There's dirt bag. Yep. And my favorite, Murderland. Murder. I mean, are they going? They're basically going. And there's also a military base. <laughs> and there's a military base, of course, because it's the same map. Um, the uh, yeah, I mean, I figure, I figure, keep these because it's basically what the community do, right? Like mm -hmm. they go, there's mm -hmm. a shorthand. No one's saying that seven-letter word that's seven consonants all one after the other is like the name of that town. They're going, we're heading to uh, Deathville, and then that's uh, uh, my favorite one is Crackback. <laughs> I don't know what happens in crack back. Do you get crack or do you get cracks in your back? Do you get your crack back? Like someone took your crack and you're like, I'm getting that motherfucking crack back. <laughs> it just, 
It also this seems obvious. I would like the irony of the names of the towns to be things like Comfort Town. Oh yeah. Or like Rainbow Loveville. More proof that you should be designing this game? Yeah. I'm just saying, give me a Candyland skin. <laughs> All right, finally. Did you know Desert Bus is still a thing? Well, Desert Bus for Hope is currently underway with a 138 hour Desert Bus charity stream for Child's Play. At the time of writing, they raised $171,000. You can see the riveting bus action for a very worthy cause at desertbus.org. Desert Bus, the strangest thing in video games. <laughs> uh, 138 hours. That's just over five and a half days, I believe. That's a of lot straight of streaming. Yeah, they're tag teaming it. There's, a, there's, take, a, there's take, a group of these. Taking time driving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because like each person has a, a set goal that they, they attempt to raise within their shift. So this is basically like simulating driving across America, which I have done and is very boring <laughs> when you get to places like Arizona because it is just these kinds of roads. Uh, how are they entertaining themselves? I mean, I think That's they're going I mean. a little bit crazy. Right. Because there's been some weird T-Rex stuff happening. I believe they formed a sort of cult. The point is, I think they need your money and your support. So if you want to go to desertbus.org, um, you can donate there if you want to. All right, cool. Moving on now, and it's time for discussion. It's also called discussion time. Steph, take it away. Discussion time. Let's talk about the interesting shit. Let's talk about some sales figures, Stephanie. Oh, I here's, love sales figures. Here's the thing. The Xbox One X came out uh, like two weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it was it was too kind of much acclaim, but also, you know, we're wondering who's buying this. I'm gonna let you know the people who are not buying this are the Japanese. Not at all surprised. Because the Japanese- the Xbox in general never does well over there. 100%, I, I, don't, I don't quite know what it is other than the fact that I guess it feels like the games that they like aren't catered for on the Xbox platform. Totally. Because the Xbox controller is clearly the superior controller and the interface is clearly the superior interface. And unless Japanese people like having uncomfortable hands <laughs> and weird like tiered menu systems, then, uh, and maybe they do. And maybe that's just one of the quirks that makes Japan Japan. Yeah. Anyway. I think also, you know, when when the consoles were making the big push for like motion control and stuff like that, Xbox was all like, connect, and you need this much space in your house to use it. That's true. Japanese people were like, cool, that will fit in like a quarter of my living room. That's 100% <laughs> true. And also their big push was, hey, it'll be TV. And my understanding is that all the Japanese are still watching TV on their flip phones. Um, <laughs> So the Xbox One, between the 6th and the 12th of November, the sales in Japan, uh, can you just, just guess, just guess how many you think were sold? Cause you know it's bad, but I just want to know, like, release week for a console. Can you give me, can you give me another country for context first? Uh, the UK sold 80,000. 80,000? Yeah. Okay. Like, 10? Thousand. Yeah. 1,639 oh. consoles. Technically, it was sold out across Japan, but that is because most re retailers only ordered enough for the pre-orders that they got. So that means only 1,600 people pre-ordered the Xbox One X <laughs> in Japan. Uh, That's the, like a sprinkling. It's, um, it's not even a sprinkling. It could be a smattering. Yeah. Like, a sprinkling implies, like, I put that much salt on my, it's n ridiculous. Anyway, the Vita sold 3,000 units in the same week. The Vita, <laughs> there's no games for the Vita. The PlayStation Pro, uh, the PlayStation 4 Pro sold 6,000. The new Nintendo 2DS XL sold 10,000. Uh, and the Switch sold 84,000 uh, in, in that week. So I just thought it was interesting. We've had two big console releases come out uh, this year. Japan aside. I wonder how much marketing they even do in Japan. I, I feel like Microsoft are kind of like, you know, these are not our people. Um, yeah. Let's just not even try. Can I ask a very honest question? Sure. Do they even have the letter X in Japan? <laughs> I've never heard a Japanese word that has the letter X in it. Think of one. Pachinko. I, mean, I, I, don't, know no. a, I don't know a lot of Japanese words. Oh, that's because you only know words with X in them, and that's why you don't know it. Um, but the X is actually doing way better than expected, sort of worldwide. You mentioned the 80,000 in the UK. Uh, it took the PS4 Pro, it took four weeks to reach the same number uh, for it. So it is, you know, in terms of these two iterative things that no one was really asking for, it looks like the X is the one that people were asking for a little more <laughs> than the PS4 Pro, but obviously the, the Switch is smashing it. Yeah, totally. I guess because it's new as well. Like yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's 
really like a, uh, the next generation for Nintendo, whereas the the One X and the Pro were kind of just like slightly better versions of what they already had. Yeah. Do you think it's also Japanese racism is coming into this? And that's why it's not so well. <laughs> I think I think you know Japan and Nintendo have a very close relationship, so they're always going to support it above everything else. You know why? Why? No X and Nintendo. All right, it's time for soon play. It's Monday the 20th of November and here's what you can soon play. It's a quiet week ahead, but there are some cool little titles which are definitely worth a look. Out today on PC and Switch is Battle Chef Brigade, which sends you on a fantasy RPG adventure to slay monsters, then it calls you back home to cook the fresh filet of monster for a panel of judges in a match three puzzle game scenario. I guess if your game can't just be one thing, it needs to be all of the things. Want to get a little dirty on the go? MXGP3 will get you there. The official motocross video game is hitting Switch and boasts all of the 2016 season tracks and presumably also the bikes that ride on them. And then on the 22nd, PlayStation's PlayLink platform gets an injection of cool titles. You can use your smartphone as a controller in Knowledge is Power, a trivia quiz game where you can sabotage your so-called friends on a quest to become the smuggest motherfucker at the party. If everyone at the party somehow doesn't hate you yet, why not bust out some tone-deaf Adele covers and sing star celebrations? That'll lift the mood. Again, you can just use your smartphone as the microphone, which is handy for keeping your lips clear of the mic used in that last guy's sensual performance. And when the night inevitably turns to bloody murder, solve the crime in Hidden Agenda. Players take control of Detective Becky Marnie and District Attorney Felicity Graves as they work the case of serial killer The Trapper. Players can manipulate the direction of the narrative by voting on quick time dialogue and action options. That's what you can soon play. What are your picks? Let us know in the comments. Alright, let's talk about some picks. Desert picks. Uh, okay, m mine first? Yeah, go for it. It's. Battle Chef Brigade, for sure, for sure. The reason being, I love that this game has just like a, an insane personality, mm. but I love games that mash different systems together that you think should not belong. So this this to me reminds me of Pyre, that game that came out earlier. The, I don't think you played Pyre. No. So it's like half an RPG and then half like a sports basketball game <laughs> and that you battle by, anyway. So Pyre has that sort of thing, and that this is reminding me of that, of going, okay, so we've got hack and slash, but then we've also got cooking, we've got this match three thing, and when these work, they sing, they come together so well, and when they don't, they're terrible, but it's like, you know, it's like a fun couple of terrible hours. I'm just not sure how I feel about like going out into the wilderness, because I feel like, you know, in RPGs you hunt for survival. Yeah. This is kind of like glorifying the killing of beasts and then like creating fancy dishes out of them. But, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> because it like, in an RPG, I feel like creatures have like even more like specialness to them because it's like you're hunting out like some beautiful dragon or whatever. Excuse me. <laughs> in every RPG, I hunt fucking 40 wildcats to make a pouch so I can hold two extra arrows. Like, how is that? There is just meat everywhere in Far Cry yeah, every time not, I like, go into You're there. not like a fancy chef trying to make like, you know, you're just like, well, I need this to survive. I need this like a coat to, to live and I need, you know. Oh, Steph, <laughs> how dare you? What's your pick? I can't believe this has to end. Uh, my pick is Hidden Agenda because I've had a bit of a go of the play link and I think it's great. I, I think can't it's wait awesome to, too, yeah. um, to uh, get into more games that use it and uh, I just love me a murder mystery. I like, this reminds me of, um, there's a film, what's the film? Murder on the Orient Express. I saw it on the weekend. Right, was it good? <laughs> Not really. Okay, um, but the point is that that story, that's like a very adult story, right? Mm. Like there's no, is there a, like, well, there is killing because it's called Murder on the Orient Express, but it's not like massive action scenes or anything. It's just talking and that sort of thing. That mm. A lot of games don't come out where it, it feels like this is for an adult audience where it's all, it seems to be mainly like conversations and mystery as mm. opposed to like action action. So yeah. I love it, I can't good, wait. Good, good, good pick. What are your picks? Let us know in the comments. Steph, where are we going now? Uh, you better believe it's prize time. <coughs> it's prize time. Last week on the episode of Screenplay, uh, we gave you this picture of me on what is apparently a drake, not a dragon, according to Peter, who didn't even actually know what a drake was and how it differed from a dragon. And was very we'll particular of calling it out when we're in the middle of shooting the TV show. To another Shadow day. Of War. They call it a drake in Shadow of War. No one has yeah, played what, that shit game. <laughs> what constitutes a drake over a dragon? That's the question. But I found pictures that said it was like a, a dragon without wings, which is not what's in Shadow of War. That's just me. Uh, as always, we've got a bunch of entries for the competition and we love them all, except for one, you know who you are. Uh, but they had to be winners. 
Uh, yes. Um, uh, wait, so we're not going to go through the runners-up? No, we, we are. There were, there were winners and then there were runners-up. I thought you would go, but before the winner there was a runner-up. Right. Blah, blah. But, uh, like, oh, forgive me. We, like, obviously we didn't talk about this before. Let's go for the runners-up first. Uh, the first one was from Blake Bryant. I love this one. Uh, he's uh, drawn me as a knight riding a dragon. I, like, you, uh, you've you got a real sort of... um. What time period cell am I looking at here? It, well, I like that it kind of looks cell shaded. It does look cell shaded. Like, he's added armor to me, which is really nice, and a nice circlet. Like, I, I feel like King Arthur days or something. It's very, you look at, and you've got the right face for it. Mm, you've it's got a real like, like sword in the stone sort of situation. sword in the and it's sword in the stone. And he's even added like some smoke coming out of the dragon's nostrils and it's flames all. and all kind of stuff. And there's it's another dragon in the background or a drake. Or a drake, who, who knows? knows? <laughs> oh, no, it can't be a drake. That thing has wings. Yeah, uh, can't be a wyvern. So that was great. Uh, the second runner-up was Steve Woods. And Steve Steve went to town on this one. This is an epic battle scene. And I love that it's like a like a screenplay battle saga. There's even a T-Rex down there. I don't know where that's <laughs> that got in there. Well, technically, that's a, I think that's, that's a, a drake. drake. <laughs> because it's, it doesn't have wings. Um, so so you and I seem to be having a fight. Yeah. Um, I. Are, you're on fire. I'm on fire, which implies that my dragon turned its head and coughed on me, uh, and you're and you actually have the powers. I, like, I have I have drawn upon the power the power of lightning, and the dragon is merely a vehicle. <laughs> the dragon, yeah, exactly. The dragon is basically your Uber to this battle. Uh, but uh, very good work there, Steve Woods. Our third and final runner-up is Michelle Dewis. I think that's how I'm pronouncing it, D-E-W-I-S. And I love this one! Of course, I love it so much, I want to put it like on everything and I will. Uh, look can at- I, Can I ask a question? Yes. Is that a cat or is that Scardi? Is that Merlin That is obviously Scardi? Scardi, look at the curly tail! I don't know what a cat's tail looks like. And the like. eyebrows! It doesn't have wings, so Sc I'm thinking Scardi it could be a drake. Scardi has those two adorable <laughs> white eyebrows. She does too. Um, you know what threw me off though? Scardi isn't 12 feet tall! Yeah, but in my fantasy, she is, is that really your fantasy? <laughs> Just consider right now, all you talk about when you bring up Scuddy is how she's constantly peeing and pooing. Imagine if she was 12 feet tall. The duty that you would need to clean up. The drowning I feel like in this, you in this scenario, though, I would have minions to do that for me. Right, okay. And she you... would just be my giant, like, beast. The lie the lie has been revealed that the computer was flat, so we're actually using an iPad propped up against a computer screen. The magic of because internet television. Because you didn't television. charge your battery. Because I didn't charge it. Is, <laughs> are you saying that you would have minions because they would all fear your giant dog? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. No, I like that. And in the, in the fantasy scenario that I have a giant dog mount, I'm obviously quite powerful and important. Of so. course, yes. <laughs> uh, but there had to be a winner. Yep. And it wasn't giant dog mounts. It was so much more. Emily Wolf. <laughs> I mean, you ca carved. a sculpture. This you is... know, we've always said, you know, yep. you can do it, you can create a sculpture, you can do whatever you want. Like, assuming people wouldn't actually do that. Somebody has actually made a sculpture, and it was Emily Wolf. And this is, look at my hair. It is, I mean, it was the first thing I was drawn to. Uh, it is amazing. This is genuinely, I'm, there's no jokes. This is just really, really I impressive. would love to know what the material, it looks like it's made soap. out of soap. It's soap, mate. Or it's, um, it's uh, butterscotch. Uh, like, uh, Werther's Originals. She sucked on 400 Werther's Originals and just crammed them together and then started just whittling away. Which is, uh, well, it's like a, <laughs> I was gonna make a Whitlam Sampin joke and that just doesn't work. No. Congratulations, Emily Wolf. Amazing, uh, amazing. You have won a uh, Astro A10 gaming headset and a scuff controller, professional scuff controller. Uh, thanks to Blue Mouth Interactive. Congratulations! Yes, well done. And I know we say this all the time, but if you feel like sending that in, I'm sure Steph we would proudly say no. display it. We, we would, would very proudly, proudly display it. In fact, sure. that dragon can bugger right off, <laughs> and we can, we can get some real homemade stuff in there. All right. Here's what you can check out on Screenplay this week. Online, we're gonna get funky with Drop Mix. Tomorrow afternoon, we're Twitch streaming something. I'll be going solo for that, because you'll be in Melbourne. You'll oh, be away. Oh yeah, as of this morning, we figured that out. But that's very mysterious and exciting. Uh, of course, though, on Thursday, Screenplay will be on your TV. And we've got heaps of game. We've got a first play of Hidden Agenda, which I'm super excited about. Uh, we'll see how the Switch handles Doom, and Skyrim, and L.A. Noire, and Car Soccer. <laughs> Plus, uh, our review of Justice League. Is it shit? 
I think deep down you know the answer to that. But you'll find out for sure on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on 7 Mate. You can follow Screenplay in your socials in all the usual places uh, here, and there are details in the description below. That's it for the show today, but as always, we've got one of your fantastic clips to play us out. That's right, it's bloody hot in the Egyptian desert, so James Bickerstaff, or is it Rob Lowe Staple? We don't know. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to cool off in the pool. Nope. Bouncy. <laughs> if you've got a clip you'd like us to run, then send it to us on Twitter using the hashtag ScreenplayMyClip. That's right, you can send it to at ScreenplayAU, at NickBoy, at HexSteph, and we'll definitely get your name wrong if your name is Travesty James. We're sorry about that last week, James. <laughs> See you later. We're out. How did that happen? Um, I climbed that. I climbed that. Climbed it. I didn't climb that, that's quite new. Still got it.